Now, what I want to do, I want to start out first by saying Daniel is a very similar book to other prophetic books, folks. You, you can look at the book of Revelation, which is heavily discussed in, in the graph. You'll see and note and note that Revelation, what it does is it repeats itself. You're simply repeating over and over and over again a sequence. And this particular sequence, every sequence you'll see, they, they do what I call overlays. In the book of Revelation, you have the trumpets. It is the only sequence and the only item that will give you this full 70th week in a seven-year period. It's the only item that does that. Every other item or any other sequence you see is, is simply... Uh, either the first half or the last half. That's why I call them overlays. They overlay onto the trumpets. So you're seeing repeats in the book of Revelation all the way to the ending of the book. It's repeat after repeat, but I call them overlays because these repeats will overlay the first half or last half of the trumpets, and the trumpets are the only sequence to give you the full 70th week. Daniel's very similar, folks. In fact, why would we think anything different? Why would you think that Daniel would be different than Revelation or other prophetic books. And you know what? Other prophetic books do just that. They'll offer a sequence, a particular time, and then they'll give you another point of view. They'll repeat the same sequence, though with different points of view, different angles, what the first sequence didn't mention. Do you understand? Daniel does exactly the same thing. In fact, he focuses on the 70th week, which Daniel chapter 9 gives us a timeline to this point in time that he continues to focus on. Now I, want, I just want you guys to get this because that's all Daniel is. He's repeating, starting from chapter 7, you're looking at repeats and a timeline taking us to this point in time that he's simply repeating. You even get the summation of what this duration of time is in Daniel chapter 12, the final chapter. It's a time, times, and the dividing of a time. We'll discuss all of that. But I want, I want you guys to get... That's God's the same, folks. If he's doing repeats in Revelation, why wouldn't you think he's doing repeats in Daniel as well or other prophetic books? Because they do the same. There's a lot of teachings out there, folks. What, what kind of irks me just a little bit recently, I had a guy come, come back to me. He, he was attempting to teach me what I already taught. I was the first one to talk about it. It's funny how, how I went full circle and came right back to him, to me, a teaching that I had taught. And he didn't think I knew it. it, was, it, was, it was just, I just found it, it irked me a little bit. I thought, why do people glean? Why do they simply say, well, I, I, here's a revelation God gave me, and, and they don't say where they got it from, and God didn't really even give it to them other than handing it through somebody else, and they'll say it's theirs. It's, it's, it's just a little frustrating, folks. So this guy was giving me my own <laughs> revelation back to me and didn't know where it came from. It was just weird. And so I know it went full circle. You will have heard certain things now that I've paid attention to. The people have been taking from this channel. I just want to set the record straight where it starts, where you're hearing this from. You've never heard until you've heard it from here first. I'm telling you the truth. I've, I've, I've checked and I've checked for years. I checked and checked. And if any of you who sit and scour the internet know and I follow this channel. I just want it all to make sense. And I want you to hear the whole piecing of it together, though you will have heard little bits and pieces. And I've seen people try to string some of this stuff together. I want everybody to get it right. So let's, let's start out. What I want you to see is each chapter, chapter seven, which is where we're going to start. Chapter seven, chapter eight is a, simply a repeat. They're repeating each other, folks. You will have heard otherwise from even other big names. And I'm taking this teaching to television pretty quick. I want, I want to make sure some things are straight because there's some teachings out there, even on television, that are contradicting what I'm going to tell you right now. You get a point of view from Daniel chapter 7, the same point in time. Daniel chapter 8 gives you another point, another angle of other events that are happening, same point in time. You're going to find Daniel chapter 9 gives you the timeline that takes us to this point in time that's being referenced. And it's a three and a half year period. It starts, you're looking at a timeline, 69 weeks, takes you to the 70th. But something happens midweek. The sacrifice and oblation ceases midweek after three and a half years. Daniel chapter 10, Daniel's praying. Daniel chapter 11 starts again at the same point in time I'm going to discuss. And even ends. All these end at the same point in time. Daniel chapter 12 gives you the summation again. A time, times, and the dividing of a time. Now let's take a look at this. 
There is a, a teaching out there, a man named Urban Baxter, who also watches this channel. In fact, he's starting to change something since what he has seen me say. You say, this is a small channel. Yeah, but I'm on television. He sees me on TV, and he and I have been battling a little bit. He finally got something correct here recently because he kept saying the opposite, and I showed <laughs> It's kind of funny. In fact, Urban, you're either watching or your staff are. You might want to heed what I'm going to show you because you have taught Daniel chapter 7 apparently is occurring over a course of several centuries. You've got the first beast. And by the way, if there's anybody on this channel who watches Irvin Baxter, you've heard this. In fact, I don't even know how you believe. Haven't you heard that the first beast is Great Britain and, and America? The lion and the eagle wings. He says, Daniel, or Irvin Baxter says, and, and other people teach the same thing. I'm going to show you folks. You're going, to get a, you're going to get to see a real simple way how this cannot be true. That it's America growing out of, of, of Great Britain. The eagle wings grew out of, even though it says they were plucked. Now that happened several centuries ago. And then he's got the second beast and the third. Third beast is interesting. He's got Germany being leopard, several heads, or these are kings that have come and gone. Again, transpiring over the course of centuries and that kind of thing. You've heard me repeatedly say, Revelation chapter 13. In fact, you know there are several aspects regarding these beasts and what Daniel says in Revelation. You can simply combine the books, folks, and you can put things together and you can make some sense out of it when you start putting things together. Revelation chapter 13's first beast, I've told you, is the sum total of Daniel chapter 7's four beasts. Haven't I said that? I've said that repeatedly. What Irvin Baxter does and other people have done, and they've, they've won off of that, that, that idea. Some change the beast around to it. It's not just Irvin Baxter out there that has a prominent teaching. But he says this is transpiring over the course of centuries. Yet you got all four beasts shy the eagle wings in Revelation chapter 13's first beast, don't you? There are no eagle wings there. Irvin Baxter can't figure out what happened to them. The first off, they were plucked. They're gone. The lion is left to stand alone by itself. I want you to pay attention to this because it looks like the eagle wings are gone before the lion stands up and is left there by himself to fend for himself. Because I've told you, the eagle wings being the United States and the lion is not Great Britain. The lion is... Is the, is the national symbol, national emblem, as you see, a lion standing on its hind feet as a man stands above the ground, is the national emblem to the city of Jerusalem. So God told me one day, as I argued with him about it. It's a story I've talked about before. I'm not going to get into it again. Point is, there are no eagle wings in Revelation chapter 13's first beast. The eagle wings were plucked. They're gone. The lion's left alone. But you have the rest everything the full composition of all four beasts in daniel chapter 7 and you know what urban says he says this happened over the course of centuries and centuries all these four beasts happened over centuries ending with the little horn supposedly being in the end and that's right is in the end though he'll tell you the first thing you're going to see is the antichrist on the scene no he's the very last thing that happens and you'll see the progression here listen to me Verse 5 in Revelation chapter 13 tells us these, the summation of these beasts occur over a 42-month window. Verse 5 will tell you that in Revelation 13. It's a 42-month window. The contention is, or the thesis is, is that they're all going to get back together again. Folks, listen to me. What one prophet will see will vary, and you'll get different angles from other prophets. That's the way God does it. And that's what's happening here in Revelation chapter 13. You are simply getting the sum total of all the beasts that are in Daniel chapter 7 that's going to occur over a 42-month window. How can I prove this? Well, if, if Irvin can count and his staff can count and we can count, and thank God I know we can, you can see all. Folks, listen, here's an anointing here right now too, by the way. Thank God for anointings. You can see all four beasts in this 42-month window in Revelation chapter 13's first beast. How can you do that? The beast, is here's the description of the beast. You can read it. I'm not going to take time because it's going to be a long video already. The first beast is a beast with seven heads and ten horns. It looks like a bear and a leopard and, and, and a lion because there's no eagle wings there at all. So that's so they're not there. They've been plucked. The eagle, the United States has been gone. Why is the United States gone? We'll get to that. 
while we understand the, the, the lion, the leopard, and the bear, and the ten horns, because we can see all of them, and, and the, can, again, the, the idea is they're all going to get back together and form this single beast in the very end. Folks, there are seven heads in this, in this beast as well. Do you know where they are? They're right here in, in the four beasts. All we got to do is count the beast's heads. You got, you got the lion that had eagle wings. The eagle wings are gone. They've, got, they've gone bye-bye. So you got the lion. There's a head. You got the bear. He's got three ribs in his mouth, doesn't he? The bear. Another head. You got the leopard. How many heads does the leopard have? Four. One, two, three, four. Then you got the final beast, the fourth ten-headed beast. I'm sorry, ten-horned beast. It's ten horns. I'm sorry, I messed up. Jump on me later. Ten horns, oh, the fourth beast. There's your seven heads, folks. Seven heads. We can all count. All seven heads, unless you want to pull them from some, from some other chapter somewhere else, are in the first four beasts, the composition of Revelation chapter 13's first beast. All seven heads on that beast are right here in the four beasts. And we'll come back to this because this is going to play in. You're going to find that part of the Revelation amazing. That's just the beginning of it. But what did I just do right there? What does that do? If all seven heads are in Daniel chapter 7's first beast, we know this isn't occurring over, over centuries, is it? Of course not. According to Revelation chapter 13, verse 5, it is occurring over a 42-month window. A 42-month window. All seven heads on these four beasts exist in a 42-month window. So that completely goes, eh, there is no more. These beasts have com been com uh, comprised of numerous centuries and, and occurring over the various centuries. Uh-uh. All of this is going to occur in a 42-month window. So I would suggest, first off, throw out the thesis. It's got anything to do with what you've been told. Or you better make it like eight heads or something. Or maybe six or I, I don't know. Come up with some other time. <laughs> change around the heads in this and then you'll have me listening other than that i'm right back to what i was saying the total composition the sum total of daniel chapter 7's four beasts which by the way are progressive we will get to this and you'll see are going to occur within a 42 month window so throw everything else that you've heard out it's it's wrong or you're going to have to rearrange the count on the on the heads of these beasts Something weird. I'm not, I, I just don't really know. And nobody's ever been able to find them. And yet, there they are right there. All you had to do is combine Revelation with John with, with Daniel. It's not hard. Especially when you can see all the similarities. Now, these chapters, again, as I'm saying, they're repeating the same sequence. And it's a 42-month window. So we've got right now According to Revelation chapter 13, if you're going to ignore Daniel's 12's summation, that it's a time, it's time, the dividing of a time, if you're going to ignore that, throw it out, at least pay attention to Revelation chapter 13, telling you it's 42 months. So this chapter 7, we now know is 42 months. It's 42 months. And or you're going to do something weird that I'm not going to understand. Uh, so I've just tried to make logic out of it and how what you're being being told can't be true. So now we go to, let's go to chapter 8. Again, another repeat, just as the book of Revelation does. We are starting out with, with a notable horn. You, you see a goat, a goat, which represents a nation. I know we happen to think, the United States happens to think that she's a sheep. She is not I'm also going to point out, one, I will say one more time, I want to re reiterate, these chapters, since they're repeating, are pointing to the same point in time, same focal point, they end at the same point. You're going to find each chapter ends with a little horn. It's ending at the same point in time, but it's also starting at the same point in time. We had we had the eagle wings over here. Now we're looking at this, this, this western goat. Get a load of this. It's a western goat. It's a goat that comes from the west, exists within the west. It's called the king of Grisha, is this notable horn we're going to be looking at. I'm not going to read through it. You can take your time to read through it. So you got a goat, a nation that's considered to be a goat. 
The king of Grisha is the guy of this goat nation. Now, Greece, some people, as you'll hear other big names tell you out there, that this has to do with Greece, or at least the locale of Greece, or where Greece was, and that's where we should be expecting this, 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 this war that we're about to see, has nothing to do with that point in time either. We have, we have Greece, or where there would be Greeks. If you look through the New Testament, first off, you'll find out Greek is interchangeable with the word Gentile. You understand? You'll hear repeatedly, either Jew, Gentile, or Jew, Greek. The, the word is interchangeable with Gentile. So we don't necessarily, it's a symbolic, folks. We don't necessarily need to be looking to the locale of Greece. We need to be looking for someone that could be considered to be a Greek or a Gentile with a nation that has a notable horn that exists in the West. Do you know of any nation that's considered the West? Do you know of any, 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 any allied nations to the West? They're going to be considered to be a Western nation, right? But there we're going to have a goat that's going to see a ram that's in the East because he comes from the West. This ram is pushing westerly north and south it's not even going east it's funny it omits east so it's these guys the goats if you're going to read the story comes from the west because it gets angry at the ram that's pushing every way but east he gets upset and he takes out a tall horn and a little horn later to be known as the king of media and persia what would these nations be if the locales are somewhat are somewhat accurate at least on this where would that be, folks? Would you be dealing with probably a Middle Eastern nation? Yes. If you got a goat leaving the West, heading East, and he's going, yeah, you're going to be going to, to, to the East. You got yourself a Middle Eastern nation. Excuse me. And what if we have two Middle Eastern nations? And I'm telling you they are two, and I've told you who they are on this channel. So I'm not going to dive back into that. But you got yourself two Middle Eastern nations. Here, remember, we're looking at the story told differently. We're starting out eagle wings, king of Grisha, United States, Gentile nation, a goat nation of a notable horn who comes and is considered to be the West. That's the United States, folks, who's going to take out a couple Middle Eastern nations or at least take out their regimes or the kings. He's going to break them. And when he breaks them, you know what happens? Get a load of this. His nation, he's broken when he's strong, right when he's strong, he did that. He takes him out. All of a sudden, he's gone. He loses his nation to the four winds. You know what? After, after the, the, the eagle wings are plucked in Daniel chapter 7, all of a sudden, you see a bear taking out three ribs, devouring much flesh down to the bone, down to the skeletal. I've told you on the channel, not only is one of them the United States. See, you're seeing the story told differently. Different aspects, different points of view same point in time both starting out with with the focal point being the king of Grisha or the eagle wings bear takes out three three nations i've told you via a word that the other two that god told me one day are going to be france and great britain and the united states there's your three ribs but that happens because while while the goat the notable horn the goat from the west king of Grisha wants to go take out a couple a couple that that he didn't like and i know why he didn't like them because it's because the, the 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 lion has to stand on its own that's what it means when you stand up you're standing you're going to power you're going to war eagle wings aren't even there lion bear takes out takes out three nations because of what he did to to, to the two horns in in the middle east and then what happens then you see a leopard that has four heads don't you each with one wing as God told me one day, each are attempting to fly, but none can. What happened after the notable horn stood up? He lost his kingdom to the four winds. Four notable kings stand up in place of this first king in his own nation. It says that. It's not a coincidence. This, this leopard's four heads are the same four notable horns right here that have stood up for the first one that was broken, taken out. And you know what's amazing? One of these is the little horn, as, as you'll read. I'm, I'm not going to go through the scriptures, folks. I'm giving you the storylines. I'm dividing it all up so you can see the different points of view. One of the four notable horns out of this king's 
nation that was broken and divided, lost to the four winds, is, is the little horn. And if you're talking the eagle wings and you're talking the same king, king of Grisha, being the, being the westerly nation, the western nation, you are talking the United States and the origins of the little horn are where? Where is it? In the Middle East? Well, that's what we're told because that's what we try to do with Daniel. We're all over the board. It's not that Daniel's repeating the same point in time. He's over here, he's over there, he's everywhere, and we're going through various millennia and various centuries, and depends on who you're listening to, you get lost, but it's the same point in time. You see that I'll come back. You'll see the same point in time that he takes us to in Daniel chapter 9, the very next chapter. You got a timeline, 69 weeks, taking you to the 70th, folks. We got that timeline broken up all over the place all over the place who are you listening to at this point when i mean there it's not 490 years of course I'm, we're, we're breaking everything up all over the board and, and and we got we got the starting stopping startings all these different gaps the most popular thesis of the gap is where the 69 weeks ended back at the life of christ what kind of a prophecy is that i'm not kidding what kind of a what kind of a lame prophecy would that be folks i mean really we, we got this prophecy ending at the life of christ and someday we got the 70th week that's going to start and we don't know when what is the purpose of prophecy then to show an omniscient god who saw the beginning and the end and is the alpha the omega he saw you before he created the world to show he's there but we got this 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 69 weeks this ending whenever starts stop starts stops some starts often a little more often than others stops depends on who you're talking to it's consecutive it's there to show you when the 70th week will open and you say ah now we know where where this opens and now we can see these events this this storyline we can see these things happen and say there's a god but we don't place these events even in the 70th week, even though the timeline takes us to the 70th week, the three and a half year duration. Daniel chapter 10, the following chapter, he's just praying, I have to mention this. Daniel chapter 11, what do we do? We start again with the king of Grecia, who when he stands up, or as Daniel chapter 8 said, when he's strong, he loses his kingdom to the four winds. The same, the same four, it's just, this is the same point in time, folks. And then what would we get told? We get to see fighting, a different, a different aspect, different point of view of what's going on with the notable horns. Or this kingdom, this beast that's got four dudes in there, each with a wing, each wanting to fly, but none can. If they were kings, at least one of them would have had two wings. But <laughs> they only have one wing each head. They're all trying to fly. So you got four. Four, they come and go in Daniel, in Daniel chapter 11. You get to watch again, like I say, when he stood up, he loses his kingdom. It's gone. Now you see this fighting, which winds up with the, between, eventually between the king of the north and the south, and the king of the north is the little horn. And I'll come back to this in a second. So again, the little horn's there too. Same point in time, where Daniel 12 tells you it's, it's a time, times the dividing of a time. So you, you got you to piece things together, folks. It's just different points of view. What happens after, after, get a load of this, after the, the, the third beast in Daniel chapter 7, you got yourself the ten horns, don't you? Now those will be Eastern. Those will be Eastern, yes. But I'll show you the division. I'll show you the division. Because the next thing you see is a little horn after, after the fourth beast looking at revelation chapter 17 18 you'll get to see remember the first, you'll get to see the 10 horns i sometimes i get confused i don't ever have notes folks let me just talk off the cuff if you don't mind the the 10 horns receive power with the beast one hour one hour how long is an hour are we talking 60 minutes no, on this channel, how do you know an hour? You know an hour, big an hour is is a year, folks. So so if you're looking at a progression, a storyline, as we just got done being told, here's a storyline. 
Towards the end, you got your 10 horns. Still within the 42 months, because it's in the first piece, is it not? Okay. So you got, you got the 10 horns in the last hour before midweek, before the times and time, the dividing of a time is up. Do you hearing me, folks? So they receive power with the beast one hour or one year. Last part, last year, last year of the of, of, of midweek where this the sacrifice ceases and the oblation cease. That is the three and a half year period we're talking about. That's the 42 months we're talking about. It's the first beast that's seen in Revelation 13 or the very final point, folks. We're talking a three and a half year, 42 month window right here. Anyway, 10 horns happens in the last year. Okay, then you got yourself the little horn that arises after, after the 10 horns. It even specifically says after, I believe it says in verse 25 or verse 25 or 24, 24 chapter 7, Daniel, uh, and, and the 10 horns are 10 kings that shall arise and another shall arise after them and he shall be diverse from the first. This is your little horn. Or as it says after the first beast in Revelation chapter 13, you have your second beast, folks. You have your second beast. And therein is your little horn in, in the second beast. He's not in the first. He is considered, you might as well consider him the 11th horn, don't you? How many horns in the first beast? 10. There's not 11 there. And some people try to put the Antichrist inside, inside, inside the first beast. And he's not there. And if you're getting a load of this, folks, again, the biggest teaching that's out there is that the Antichrist starts, starts and opens the week. You're seeing, you're seeing a progression, a storyline. You're seeing the ten horns, and then you get to see a second beast comprised, comprised of two horns that happens after the first, or happens after the ten horns, which, according to Revelation, is the very final year, isn't it? You just got to piece it together, folks. Now, we always wind up with, with the little horn in each one of these. Making where, again, is the residence of the little horn? Where? In the king of Grecia's. And it's not Greece. It's not any locale over there. It's got nothing to do with it. Not if the king of Grecia is the, is, is, is the Western nation. Is a nation considered to be the West? Not if it's the eagle wings. Not if we're starting at the same point in time, ending at the same point in time. Now, I'm going to ask for your forgiveness on one thing. If I ever reprint this book, I got, I got several things I want to add to this. A revelation that happened to me several weeks ago, I would like to put back, I would not, I'd like to put in there. I'd like to put Passover back in here too, which came via the revelation. The, 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 and, and I used to have Passover in the first print of this, folks. I used to have Passover in there. But I took it out because I just want it simplified. That was stupid of me to do that. And I would make one more correction. And this is a revelation that God gave me more recently. And I, I wonder why. Why do you keep waiting to give me something that, that's amazing, something that's brand new, something, something that makes sense finally? And yet that's what people do all the time, isn't it, folks? They will, they will run with what they think. And that's the best you can do until God comes down and steps in and says, no, here, here, here is what it is. And so you have to wait on God sometimes. You just have to wait. The second piece I've argued repeatedly holds the little horn. But I had, I had that second piece aligned up with Israel. And it was wrong and I put it in the book. And if I ever get to do another reprint, I'm, I'm changing it to this, and this is it. And I'll tell you what it is. No, the, 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 this, the alliance with Israel, or the ability to be aligned with Israel, is gone by the first beast. The eagle wings are plucked. They're gone. The alliance that's seen the final beast, the very last thing, again, the abomination, folks, happens 1290 days in. That's again going to involve the little horn. You can see the details of the fighting in Daniel chapter 11, who the king of the north and the king of the south finally align themselves after kings have come and gone. These two align themselves. They have a sit down. They get down, they sit down together and they align themselves. 
It's a deceitful alliance. It's not going to last. Uh, it's under the wrong pretenses, and they're probably lying to each other. In fact, I think it's what it says. In fact, I'll probably I think it's verse twenty-seven. I'll put I'll put that down here. You can see the alliance between the king of the south and the king of the north. The king of the north being the little horn. There's your two kings. There's your two kings. And I'm going to tell you something else. It's not just that, folks. It's not just the second beast and the two king alliance right there in the second beast. That's the king of the south and the king of the north. We're not going to know until that happens. But you'll also understand, if you look at Revelation, you'll understand this second beast that does hold the little horn in there. Even according to Revelation, which will make sense to you, even he is the eighth, but is of the seven. Did you hear what I said? I just gave you a scripture. Even he is the eighth and is of the seven. The seven, where, where is he again? So come on, guys, I know you know this. I got very little time on my battery. Where is he at? He's in the third beast or one of the four notable horns. The leopard with four heads or four notable horns or one of the four kings that are fighting in Daniel, Daniel chapter 11. Even he is the eight, but is of the seven. He is one of the four notable horns, folks. One of the seven heads. This should show you and prove to you without a shadow of a doubt that I told you I'd come back to that this, this Daniel chapter seven is not transpiring over the course of, 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 of several, in some cases, I guess the thought could be millennia, but several centuries. That's not even possible, is it? If he is one of the seven, then he has to exist in one of these right here. It couldn't have happened a long time ago. I hope this is making sense, folks. It couldn't have transpired. This guy came out of one of the seven. And where are the seven existing? In the 42-month window. And where are they? In Daniel chapter 7. Even he's the eighth and is of the seven. He is of the king of Grisha, the eagle wings, the United States, a Gentile nation that's the West. And this is all going to transpire. And now you understand. The only thing I left out was who is Persia? And who's media? Who is our president going to take out? Who's going to attack them? Attack them in his fury. The very word fury that he used against North Korea. I haven't heard that word and I couldn't tell you how long. I about fell out of my chair when I heard him say they're going to be attacked with fire and fury. That is what the notable horn attacks the ram with in his fury. And when he is strong, which is where we're coming up, if he gets elected, folks, how strong is he going to be? If it happens this year, as is possible, I don't know. It's an election year. The guy is going to be winning. But when he's strong and takes out two, two Middle Eastern nations, you better duck. Now, this is Daniel unsealed properly, and you heard it here. Look for more to come. Until next time, take care and God bless.